Hi, best friends, it's Brian Deach, and today we're gonna to talk about the Zscaler Data Protection Platform. Are you down with DPP? Yeah, you know me. That was corny, I know. But let's, let, let's look at this. So when we think data protection, you're probably thinking, oh, we gotta protect the internet and all the scary things that are out there. SaaS-based applications that maybe you own or maybe have to partner with. Uh, infrastructure and platform as a service. Of course, we have the data center to contend with. Third party, BYOD. And then of course, the work from anywhere population, which includes on-prem as well as, you know, Starbucks abroad and, and working at home. And those same users may be trying to copy stuff off on USB, printing it, Lord knows what. And when we think about that, a true platform gives you the ability to do things a little bit differently, right? Complete workflow automation, the ability to do coaching, watermarking, and basically we want to really enable the business to do a lot more without impeding stuff and in, without introducing any risks. So let's jump right into it. If you don't know much about Zscaler, that's okay. We're gonna to try to focus just on DLP today and what that actually looks like. But one common narrative that we have is that you have the Zero Trust Exchange or the ZTE for short, and everything that I talk about today, it's gonna to be centered around data loss prevention, obviously, and cloud browser isolation because they complement each other very, very well. So starting off with work from anywhere, and we'll talk about the, the data in use. So I do have an agent, we call it Zscaler Client Connector. This agent actually gives me the ability to prevent users from copying sensitive information, maybe it's PCI, PII, data off to USB, and guess what? Same thing could be said about printing sensitive data. You wanna make sure that your data stays exactly where it needs to be and not just running around in the wilderness. And last but not least, I have more meetings than not when we talk about data protection when someone's like, hey, I can take my cell phone and take a picture of my screen and you can't do anything about it. Well, you used to be right, but not anymore. Because now I can actually watermark stuff with your identity. So yeah, I can't stop you from taking pictures of it, but I might prevent you from doing it because it has your name associated with it. Moving forward, right, the next big use case is, uh, you know, these users, as much as we like to say that they're super productive, the reality is they are going out to the internet day in and day out. And so we wanna make sure that, you know what, happy users do more and that's okay. Let's give them access to the internet without introducing any risk. So they can check email and I can allow and, and, and maybe block downloading or I can do you know different things. But more importantly, I can do isolation or I can look at this and say, are you trying to take something sensitive and put it in the email and send it off? Pfft stop that from happening, right? That the suit Nazi, you're not allowed to do that. Same things with like, uh, you know, WordPress websites like BrianDeach.com, come through there, allow them to contribute stuff, allow them to read it. Just don't allow them to take sensitive information and do bad things with it. From a SaaS based perspective, right? Whether I'm tenant aware or not, I do know your con I do know your data in the context. And so I want to look at this and say, Hey, you know what? Maybe something sensitive is allowed to live in OneDrive but maybe not salesforce.com, I have that granularity. Or maybe you're part of the legal team and you need to have the ability to do both OneDrive and Dropbox, right? I can look at the identity of the user and do different things. Coming back over here at the data center, forget VPN, but that's a whole nother discussion. I have the ability to broker the connectivity from this person working from anywhere, including the office. I have a little Zscare agent, a little VM, and this thing can talk to these internal applications. So if this application's web-based, it's HTTP, HTTPS, cool, guess what? I can isolate that data. I can prevent that user from copying that text and then putting it on a device that they don't own. Uh, I can even broker access to all ports and all protocols like SSH, RDP, grant access to file shares and all of that good stuff. Now, as we dovetail from work from anywhere to like third party and BYOD, the th one thing I want you to know is if you can get them to install an agent, everything I talked about is completely in scope. But every once in a while, you have difficult partners that don't want to do that. I get it. And so what we have is the ability called a portal page where this user is going to go to a portal page that happens to live on the Zero Trust Exchange. And when you get here, guess what? I figure out who you are. I force authentication. And then based upon the identity of this user, I can take that data and I can make intelligent decisions. I can be like, hey, you know what? You can talk to application one, but I'll put you in isolation, stop you from copying and pasting stuff. 
maybe it's like privileged remote access, right? Which is, uh, they want to have access to like this SSH server, but they don't want to install client. Well, I can just say, you know what? Only thing you need to bring to the table is a credit score heartbeat and a modern browser, baby, because I can render this thing right within a browser window. And oh, by the way, I can isolate it too. You can work in there, do your stuff, but you're not going to download anything. So from a data residency standpoint, you know that your data stays safe. It stays here and not on some sort of weird unsanctioned device out over here. As we switch gears a little bit, we think about uh, infrastructure and platform as a service. And, you know, we're doing this whole like data in use, data in motion. What about the data at rest? And so I'd like to draw off another little zero trust exchange right here. It's not different, but the, the, the functionality is a little bit different. So this, instead of being inline, it's out of band. And what does that mean? It means via APIs, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to be able to come over here and talk to these platforms to look for misconfigurations and to enforce that DLP. Now you might be thinking, oh, is that CASB or CSPM or SSPM or CNAP? It, it's, it's everything, right? What you need to understand is like some of the best use cases here would be if I have a file that has PCI type of content in OneDrive or SharePoint and someone has shared it outside the organization, you'd probably like to know about that. This tool allows us to find those misconfigurations and pull that out, keeping in compliance. Same thing, I can pick on like S3. Maybe you have like a database S3 bucket that's over there in AWS. It's got PCI content in there. It's not encrypted at rest and it's wide open to the internet. You can leverage this tool to go out there and find that misconfiguration. Say it's data at rest, it's got PCI stuff, better encrypted. Oh, by the way, it's publicly available to anybody. Pull out that ACL. Now the next thing from an out of band perspective, we're gonna pick on salespeople because I, I think they like to be picked on sometimes. So we got Joe Schmo over here, or Jill Schmo, I have no idea. And uh, Joe comes over here doing his job and he decides, you know what? I'm gonna open up salesforce.com, it's Thanksgiving, and I wanna send some cookies to an executive because you know what, that'd be pretty rad. So I come over here to like 1-800-COOKIES, and uh, when I do that, a couple of things happen, right? This is a sanctioned application that you know about. Who the heck is this thing, by the way? And if they are a company, I apologize. But this website says, hey, uh, we noticed that you probably use Salesforce and you wanna send some cookies. How about you just give me access to do that? And so what does the user do? They're like, they get click happy. You make my life easier, baby. Boom, I click on that. And now this website can come over here and pull that information to ship out the cookies. Now the downside is this website, this third party unsanctioned application is assuming the identity of this user. And guess what? They have access to a lot more than just one shipping address. They have probably access to a lot of stuff in salesforce.com. That's bad, right? Maybe, this thing's breached at some point in time and they're assuming those credentials are bouncing around the network like a, like a dang field mouse, just leaving a path of destruction and we don't want that to happen. So how do we fix this problem? Again, via out of band, I can scrape logs, I can look in here and try to find that misconfiguration. Like reach out to Joe Schmo, like bro, did you know that that, that was like the dumbest thing you could have ever done? Help coach them into making better decisions and make the world just a better place overall. Now, <clears throat> the last thing I'll leave you with and is probably the, the most influential thing that we've done in such a very long time is that, you know, when we first looked, and when I say we, the whole industry, when we looked at doing data protection in the cloud, we kind of went and did it the old school way, right? And uh, it was just like, you know, find the data, create a policy, find more data. Like it was just like this never end circular thing, this nonsense. So. I encourage you, if you reach out to someone to talk about data protection and they say, okay, you know, from a DLP perspective, uh, we're going to talk to you today about regex, right? And uh, maybe we have the most dictionaries in the, the, the world, I'm like, wow, that's cool. You need to have like a, a Yellowstone moment with them, right? Like take them out to the train station. If you don't get that reference, Google it, come right back. I promise I'll still be here waiting. And then we kind of like, we as an industry kind of evolved, said, oh, you know, there's a better way of doing it. Maybe index document matching, make it a little bit easier with fuzzy matching. And then there's exact data match, right? That's getting, getting better. And it dawned on us, wait a second. We sit in line 
out of band for all of your data. We actually know your data better than you. And so we look at this and say, from a DLP perspective, yeah, like if my grandpa was here, like he'd be stoked with this, but we want to come through and say that there's a better way of doing DLP. And that's with machine learning. Now, before I lose you and you're like, oh, not another one of these talks, think about it. If I am in line for all of your users, I decrypt all of that traffic, my visibility is unprecedented. And if we think about that, I can really hone in on this data. If a user is generating, maybe it's developer, maybe they're onboarding a new client. If, they've, if we or you have never seen that data as it flows through here, I can dynamically do a couple things. And that's gonna be classify that data and then label it and get you out of that business of the, the cat and mouse game of finding data and creating policies left, right, and, up, and upside down. Which means this user comes through and they're sending something maybe to salesforce.com. It belongs there, right? That's the way we want it. We label it, we're good to go. That user then says, you know what, maybe I'll try to just send a copy off to like my personal email. Boom, soup Nazi moment, no soup for you. So when thinking about doing data protection, right? Do you really want to have like the, the Rube Goldberg machine of DLP? Probably not. There's, there's got to be a better way. And so from my perspective, going something that's more cloud native, leveraging machine learning on a platform that understands everything that you're doing is exponentially more important and easier to maintain. So with all that said, I'd love to say that this was probably like not much, but I, I'm a realist, right? This is a lot to kind of take in. My ask is real simple. If you have any questions, leave a comment reach out to the sales team. And uh, most importantly, thank you so much for your time watching and I look forward to either hearing or meeting you soon. That's it, thank you.